Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Mr. Coley, will you please note that all commissioners are present except for Commissioner Herbert? Thank you all for coming. Uh, there are a lot of uh, folks here I'd like to recognize here, but we'll start over uh, the we'll start the evening by recognizing the members of our KUB Community Advisory Panel who are in attendance tonight: Dr. Vivian Scheip, I see, uh, Mr. Ken Minot, Ms. Christine Bowler. Where is Ms. Bowler here? Okay, um, Ms. Erin Gill. And Mr. Mark Campen and Mr. Terry Ledford. Thank you all for coming. Now to open the evening, I'm going to call on our uh, CEO, uh, Gabriel Bolas. Mr. Bolas. Is it working? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Chair. I ask you, um, thank you all for coming out tonight. We're really looking forward to hearing from your comments. Before we begin, I want to introduce Jamie Davis, our, assist, our Vice President and Assistant to our Chief Technical Officer, who's going to give you a brief presentation on what we're, what we're thinking about doing at KUB with broadband. It'll be a really short presentation, give you some high-level information. After that, we'll, we'll have folks be giving comments. If you have questions, um, we'd ask that you save them to the end, but if you have them, we'll be, have a lot of staff on, on hand to answer any questions. But the idea is to have comments from you, the public, and we're looking forward to hearing from you about whether or not we do this. So with that being said, Jamie, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Bolas. Uh, again, uh, the, the purpose of tonight is really to hear from you. Uh, this is a community investment, and this public forum is really to hear your voice about whether KEB should go into this endeavor. Just to start with a little bit of level set here, um, what a lot of folks don't realize about KUB is we serve more than Knoxville and parts of Knox County. And so I just want to show you a map of the electric service territory because that's where this broadband plan would be centered around. Um, so you'll notice to the north, a lot of space up there in Union County would be able to be part of the uh, opportunity to have broadband service as well as part of Granger County. Uh, if you look at Knox County proper, we do have KUB customers that live in deep, what I'll call deep west, west of Cedar Bluff. There are a lot of folks that only have gas service from KUB. Now, unfortunately, uh, per the state law, this is limited to our electric customers. So if you're a gas-only customer, you will not be able to receive this service, nor would the funding to go behind to, to uh, in, inside of this uh, grid modernization plan would not be impactful to you. Uh, we have more than 5,000 electric lines. So that gives you 5,000 miles of electric lines. That gives you a feel for how much fiber, ultimately, we'd have to lay in order to serve broadband services. We cover 688 uh, square miles serving 212,000 customers. And about five years ago, as part of our Century 2 plan, and really our first effort at grid modernization, we realized that fiber was a key part of our utility system. It provides a great low latency, high speed way for our infrastructure to talk to each other. And we set upon an endeavor to lay about what would be 300 miles of fiber to connect all of our substations. So you can kind of get an economy of scale there of what our current plans hold to what it would ultimately take to serve broadband service. What we get asked a lot though is why, are, why is KEB wanting to do this? What's the value proposition? Well there's really a couple key reasons why. One reason is is that fiber is really key to the electric grid's future. Again as we enter the next 100 years if you will of electric power in Knoxville, customers expectations for reliability continue to climb and climb and climb. Many of us were impacted by the, the Christmas Eve storm, no fun. Uh, and we need technology in order to keep those things from happening. The great news is, as technology has advanced on the electric system, there are devices that can help re improve reliability, and utilities across the nation are doing that. But they require that fiber platform in order to be able to work. Um, both current and future applications down the road, as we hear more about EVs, solar panels, in-home load control, all of them are foundational. They require that low latency, high speed uh, medium for communication. So how does broadband tie into that? Well, it's on that same network Then KEB, per state law, can actually provide broadband service to our electric customers. And so that's one why, is the benefit to the electric division. The second reason is, is boy, all of us are hopefully coming out of the pandemic. But what we realized was indeed, the pandemic highlighted just in our opinion how much broadband service is a utility both in inner city of Knoxville and our rural communities, everybody was working, going to school, visiting their doctor online, 
and that reliable high-speed broadband became a necessity. And through our research, we've realized that there are portions of KEB service territory with either inadequate internet service or limited choice. And what we hear from the research is, is folks want that choice. They want a better option in that particular regard. We also see an option here to really reduce the digital divide for our low-income uh, customers. And there are programs that are being developed nationwide. You're hearing a lot of information from a federal or state level about support for rural broadband, uh, for services for low-income folks. We want to be part of that solution as well. We can't solve it by ourselves, uh, but we think with both private and public partners, we can find a way to do something for those folks that struggle uh, in these situations. So at the end of the day, though, it's bigger than just the cost of installing the fiber and providing the service. The quote on the board is from Dr. Benton Lobo. He's an economist with the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. He's done a couple studies about EPB in Chattanooga. Many of you have heard about Chattanooga and their success with municipal broadband. And what they would tell you in that deal is that for a $500 million investment, they've reaped that over to $2.5 billion over the course of the 10 years of Chattanooga system. But as you can see, the quote on the screen, at the end of the day, the benefit to the community is much greater, and it's much more than just installing the fiber lines. It's necessary for that smart grid that, we're that I talked to you about, about improving KUB's electrical infrastructure, but it's also required for cutting edge business, educational, and research applications. So, what we're here to hear from you tonight about is what would be KEB's fiber division look like? It's a fifth division for KEB. As you're aware, we already have water, gas, wastewater, and electric service. So it'd be a fifth division operated by KEB, financially separate from those other divisions, has to run on its own. Uh, service would be available to every electric customer without installation cost. Uh, we think inside of our plan, it would add approximately 200, 200 jobs to KUB, not mentioning the contractors and related uh, jobs and, and capital investment that would be inside of Knoxville. And we think it provides enhanced technology with competitive pricing. So a lot of folks say, well, what are you gonna, what's inside that business plan and what do you wanna sell? Um, so from a residential perspective, um, our entry level package is a gigabyte symmetrical, meaning both upload and download speeds are equivalent. And that's a really unique aspect of a, of, of a municipal broadband product. No contracts. Unlimited, meaning use all you want, we'll make more, not charging you for overages. And again, everything is local, 24-7, 365 support, locally here in Knoxville, staffed by local folks, and uh, technical support provided in the same way. That's not the only package. Again, two and a half gigabyte symmetrical internet option will be available as well too. Other, what I'll call ancillary products that go along with it, um, what you're seeing in the market is, is most folks offer that proverbial triple play, and KUB would as well. Uh, so not only will we offer television and phone service, uh, it'll be streaming product there, so no set-top boxes. Many of you have Roku's, Fire Sticks, that kind of notion. We would have a, a TV option that, to, to go along with that with three different packages. Um, if you kind of want to know what is in those, we get that question a lot. Go to yeah, Electric Power Board of Chattanooga. is a great representative of what a municipal TV product looks like. Um, you can stream on multiple devices. You, you, most of you are familiar with what, what that looks like. But also we want to offer a managed router service. Sometimes you just want the easy button in setting up this in your home. I know sometimes my Wi-Fi speed's not fast enough and I don't know how to fix it. For $15 a month, we'll take ownership of that. Your Wi-Fi network, the speeds, so forth and so on, being sure that you have the best possible experience with KEB. And I mentioned uh, that other element of the triple play. The phone would be available, a voice over IP product, um, unlimited long distance, enhanced features with caller ID, what you'd expect from a a traditional you know, semi-landline uh, product in that particular regard. And also we would offer offerings to our business community as well too. Those are a little bit different than residential, they're a little more a la carte, a little more sculpted to what that business is, but we would offer business products uh, for our business community as well. So what's it look like and how do we pay for it and how much does it cost? It's about 5,000 miles of distribution fiber, talk to you about that. We estimate it would take us about seven years to build that out. And the next question you usually get is, well, when are you going to be in my neighborhood? When does it start? When was it going to be in my neighborhood? We would start as early as this fall. Again, we've got a lot of fiber plant that's already built. We'd start near where that is. Um, but we would look to really reach those areas that we know we have utility need to solve those, some of those reliability issues. We'd try to target some of the underserved areas that need this service. And then we also estimate that with federal dollars down the line, some of that could be sculpted by uh, what's available for rural uh, broadband internet through grants. 
Um, it would cost $702 million in electric system cost over the 10 years, uh, the first 10 years of the plan. And like what we do with all of our capital projects, we would fund that with a balanced approach using debt, meaning issuing bonds, revenue, meaning rates that you as our rate payers pay, and then the fiber division pays back access to that electric division in the form of what we call access payments. At its peak, um, at a 35% take rate, meaning 35% of the market that we can serve signs up for KEB, that almost gets up to $30 million on an annual basis. So again, a sizable uh, lease payment, if you will, coming back to the electric division. So what does that rate forecast look like? Because we know that impacts all of our customers, and we want to be completely transparent about it. So the 10-year financial plan does include three consecutive 3% 3 annual rate increases on the front end of the plan. We had rate increases as part of our Century 2 program already in our 10-year plan, but how we would characterize how we've changed it is we've moved them forward a little bit, and we've made them a little bit more to, to be able to fund this enhanced grid modernization plan. Um, it includes, again, that continued investment in Century 2, which is no more complicated than replacing poles, maintaining our substations, expanding for growth. And then the good news is on the rate increase format, on the rate increase forecast rather, is that no anticipated rate increases past those three. So what we've seen in Chattanooga, and they've said this in public is, that revenue coming from the fiber division serves as a source of revenue for the electric division and really has been able to stabilize their electric rates in that regard. How does that impact the average customer? And that long-term impact of funding the fiber network is about $3.60 on the average residential bill. I'm going to have to use a, a toy here so I can point at a chart. Um, what you'll see here on the left, so you can kind of find yourself on this chart, is kilowatt hours used by different levels of customers. Our average customer, it's kind of hard to see that it's bold there, uh, is about 1,100 kWh a month. So today's current average bill for that customer is $117 a month. With both of those increases, those three three percent at full build out, at the end of the, the implementation of those three rate increases, will be a total of monthly addition of $10.80. How that breaks down to our current plans and the addition for this enhanced grid mod, you can see the difference between the two columns. So the value proposition for the uh, increase for the fiber network is on average about $3.60 a month. Now, if you use less, that impacts less. If you use more, it'll be more because it's based on the usage in that particular regard. So a lot of folks want to know, well, what's next in this process? Well, you're here tonight. You are here. Uh, on the map here, uh, part of the process by co codified by state law is we have to have a public forum hearing from you and allowing our board to hear from you what you think about this value proposition of KEB providing broadband. From there, uh, the board can consider a recommendation and a, a creation of the division and recommend city council approve it. And you can see the last vote, city council has a vote as our governing jurisdiction allowing us to get into the business. So tonight, and I'll reiterate what Mr. Bola said, ultimately the question is, is KUB, should KUB uh, proceed with this plan? Um, tonight's format will be you giving feedback to the board. There won't be back and forth, and we know you may have questions. So we're going to hang around. Feel free to, to see us after the meeting tonight. I'd love to talk to you about it and hear your thoughts and comments and concerns uh, if you have questions that didn't get answered. Because we want to be respectful of everybody's time, we're asking folks kind of keep your comments to around three minutes. There'll be a helpful timer that'll be up on the board and so you can kind of gauge yourself where you are in that particular regard. So those end my formal comments. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this process. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Chair Haskin. It occurred to me that uh, I was rude in the beginning. We did not introduce ourselves. And so why don't we start on the end, Kathy? Kathy Hamilton. Claudia Caballero. <laughs> John Worden. Jerry Askew. Adrian Simpson Brown. Tavi Small. Very good. As uh, Gabe mentioned and Jamie mentioned uh, the, earlier, the primary purpose of our meeting is to hear from you. And so we have a list of people who have registered to speak tonight. And um, we would like to call first on our mayor, India King Cannon.
it may not be on. Uh, can't turn it on now. There okay. you go. Hey, I got the technical skills here. Um, <laughs> Good evening. It's really nice to see you all face to face, and I just want to start by thanking uh, all of you for your hard work on this and many other issues facing our community. Uh, I have an opportunity to uh, appoint you all, and I don't always see you in, in, your, in your working mode, so it's really nice to see you here tonight in this really important meeting. Um, I'm on the record for a long time uh, as being very supportive of municipal broadband. Uh, I believe affordable internet is a basic need in the 21st century. Residents and businesses alike regularly raise concerns about gaps in service and less reliable and lower speed service. I've talked to business owners in downtown Knoxville who have these issues, and I talk to homeowners and residents in more rural parts of the city and county who also have that. I want to—I just had the opportunity tonight to meet um, Holly and Jesus over here. Raise your hands. They moved here recently from Florida and live in South Knoxville. And uh, Holly is a healthcare worker and, and works in an office downtown. And um, Jesus works from home, and he has not been able to, uh, for any amount of money get someone to bring high-speed internet to his home. And so that's a problem, and, and it's not just uh, for uh, individual and business use, it's for our children and, and school and educational use as well. So I wanna thank you for your pragmatic, judicious approach to responding to this community need and opportunity. Your approach leverages investment in the modernization and reliability of the electric system to ensure that each and every KUB electric customer rural, urban, business, residential, has access to broadband internet. And I think it's really important, I know uh, some mayors uh, in the rural counties surrounding here, including Union County Mayor Jason Bailey and Granger County Mayor Mike Bird are very supportive of this. And we have common ground on this, and, and that's a rare and precious thing. So I'm really pleased uh, to join them in support of this. We're also getting a big bang for our buck. KUB electric customers benefit from a smarter, more reliable and efficient electric grid. We will also have access to a homegrown broadband system that gives every, everyone another high quality internet option. Municipal broadband, as you have heard from Jamie, is an investment in education and opportunity for families. It helps families thrive, connects them to education, good jobs, and as we've learned this last year, telemedicine too. Telemedicine is up and operating and it's never gonna go away and that's just a great way to access healthcare for people in all parts of Knoxville and our rural East Tennessee neighbors as well. It's also an investment in a healthy economy, one that will create jobs directly while also helping Knoxville attract and support local businesses and a talented workforce. I can't tell you, I've heard several times of businesses who said we'd like to come to Knoxville but we really wanted that reliable municipal broadband in Chattanooga. I don't want that to happen anymore. We need to keep those talented people and draw entrepreneurs and businesses and investment to Knoxville. I support this plan. I will encourage City Council to authorize the creation of this new utility when the KUB votes, votes to move it forward. I should recognize, I think Charles Thomas is here, uh, one of our City Council members. Any other City Council members here? Okay, well, I'll be encouraging them to support this and appreciate uh, Mr. Thomas for being here. And the city looks forward to continuing to work closely with KUB and other local partners to support efforts that ensure lower income students and families in Knoxville can access and benefit from these new services as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor King Cannon. We really appreciate your being here. Our next speaker is uh, Union County Mayor uh, Jason Bailey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, thank you for allowing me to be here tonight um, representing Union County. And I also want to thank um, Mr. Bolas over here. I've spoken with him several times. And I just want to thank you for your, your kindness, sir, and for your uh, willingness to talk to me about our county's needs. And I appreciate that very much. But, uh, but folks, I was fortunate enough to be elected by the fine people of Union County about, about three years ago. And I'll tell you, at the top of the list in Union County, on uh, some of the huge needs that there are, broadband internet is number one, folks. I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, we're a very small rural county, and which is a blessing in many ways. We're very fortunate to be that little small county. But I'll tell you, folks, it hurts us in other ways. And I'll tell you, one of those is trying to find a broadband provider to reach out to our rural citizens in Union County. 
Um, and I'll just be honest with you, um, the big guys, and you know who I'm talking about, haven't really done anything for us the last 10 to 20 years probably as far as expansion and getting uh, services out to our citizens. And I'll tell you folks, um, I'm here today to say Union County is ready. We're past ready. We're ready. We're ready tomorrow. If you guys want somewhere to start, come to Union County. Our doors are open, okay? You can come. Uh, and I'll tell you, the map that you guys just showed up here just a little while ago, uh, if you notice, the largest majority of our county is served by KUB. Uh, the top part that you saw, that's actually served by another electric utility, Powell Valley Electric, which did exactly the same thing that you're doing here. So that actually served pretty much half of our county. So I've got another half to go. So by doing this, this will literally serve I would say around 85 to 90 percent of citizens in Union County. Uh, there's two other small areas that are served by other utilities that we're going to try to make something happen there. Um, but folks, again, we are ready. We're ready. We're ready. And I have to say, uh, during the pandemic, <coughs> excuse me, our school system did a phenomenal job by literally giving every student in Union County a Chromebook to take home to do their work from home. But folks, I'll just be honest with you. If you don't have internet, a Chromebook is a doorstop, okay? That's what it is. And it's, it's just, it's not fair to those kids. We can do better, and I want us to do better. And that's part of my job in Union County to make sure we do better. So uh, with that being said, folks, it's an overwhelming yes from Union County. And uh, if I can ever be of any assistance to you guys in our fine county, please reach out. We are ready to rock and roll. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, point of personal privilege you have a voice for radio <laughs> I on the other hand have a face for radio <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> our next speaker is uh, Mr. Greg Drury hello uh, thanks for uh, having this and, and allowing us to come and speak and, and everything uh, I'm an engineer that has worked for a uh, fiber to the home provider in the past and I've seen firsthand how much this can help with like reliability as far as like the operation and maintenance, reduce costs, drive down, things like that, as well as put things out there other, such as demand response systems, automated metering, uh, help really drive those things down. But where I worked in the past, we also like serviced all the schools and it really helped with that when we were full triple play provider much like and I'm sure you've probably talked to them uh, <laughs> but um, yeah it it really drove business it, it, it drove a lot of things especially we've had some packages available for like low-income housing for students who needed internet access and didn't necessarily have it uh, and it really helped them out a lot too uh, you could see improvements and in, in, so the attitudes of some of those kids as well as the educational benefits of that uh, so I have no doubt that it can do all of that it should also allow you to um, have other potential revenue streams down the road whether it be um, public Wi-Fi downtown or things like that it could enable some things like that 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 you could look at and, and really have some things there so I'm all for it as a uh, rural underground customer I'm, I'm curious to see how the rollout is there because I know some of the uh, some of the downsides to to fiber and, and underground. Um, I've seen them firsthand and, and had to deal with those uh, before. But I'm, I'm really excited about this. I, I'm looking forward to the competition because I'm also one of those that only has one choice. And uh, and having to work from home this past year, it's been pretty tying at times, especially when everyone in the neighborhood or, or area is trying to work from home and there's an issue and and, and it's hard to get get service. So I thank you for your time and, and everything else. Thank you, Mr. Drury. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Kevin Murphy. Thank you, board members. Um, I'm speaking first in my role as chair of the Knox County Planning Alliance. We're a group that advocates for good planning, smart growth, and thing, uh, while also preserving rural character. Uh, we believe infrastructure is something that uh, needs to be uh, built out all across the county, and uh, broadband infrastructure is very unevenly built. Some places have great, some places have absolutely nothing or terrible. So uh, we're really supportive of additional providers coming in, and more importantly, providing an equal access around the entire county. Um, so we also, uh, in, in the Planning Alliance, 
view this as this is potentially a way to help uh, with some of our growth concerns. If you can actually do more work from home or less travel, then we actually take cars off the uh, off the road, and we uh, you know we, we we reduce some of the transit and uh, tra uh, infrastructure burden. So that's good. On a personal note. Um, I live on a farm that's got 8,000 cars a day on one road and 9,000 on another road. Uh, I can, I might, I asked Comcast, they gave me about a $4,000 uh, cost to build, you know, their cable out to get to my house a few hundred feet off the road. Uh, AT&T, they, uh, they drug the fiber right through the manhole cover at the end of my driveway to the subdivisions down the street. Um, I've called and asked them and, oh, we're sorry, fiber's not going to be available to you. So. Um, it's really, you know, even when you call and ask as a citizen, you can't get it. So uh, this is a great proposal, um, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. <clears throat> Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Vivian Scheip, uh, a member of I Am the Voice of the Voiceless, the leader of that organization. Today I'm going to take off my advisory hat for a few minutes, for about three minutes, and tell you what I see as a community advocate in the community. I'm coming to tell you that I see the young children. I see the young children who were sidelined by a pandemic last year that left many of them who already had no internet with a very big educational gap. I see and have seen parents and grandparents scrambling to get those coveted hot spots only to get them and to find out after sometimes they break down and then they can't get the hot spots to educate their children. Now you also have a problem of those who already didn't have transportation, which is another issue we need to deal with. But how do they get to the school to replace that hot spot? Because they're already putting their baby on that school bus to go to school or they're already sitting in front of that computer and they didn't have transportation. So I see that. I see the problems that this would fix for the marginalized communities of Knoxville, Tennessee. It is able, it's gonna be an equalizer for all people. This is a good thing that is coming. Now listen, I have watched KUB over this past 15 months during this pandemic, and the one thing that I can tell you is that they have been in a give back mode. See, when you make billions and billions and billions of dollars off of people, at some point, competition, it's time to give back to your community. Now I've seen that. And I can tell you from working as an advisory person, listen to the community come to me and tell me, hey, my lights are about to be cut off. I know of a man who slept in his car because he could pay his rent, but he didn't have the money because he lost his job. But KUB has, if you will check, put millions and millions and millions of dollars back into the community and kept lights on. So if we're going to be real, let's be real. Competition is a good thing. I believe we need competition in this. When you are making billions of dollars, it is time to give back. Community matters. Community matters. I've seen this kind of growth in Chattanooga. We can do this. Our sister city is doing well. We can do that here. I will be promoting this system in the community. I will be speaking to different community groups. I will be promoting this and going to meet y'all in front of city council, promoting this. This is a good thing. I am in favor of this change. The one thing that the pandemic has taught us is there is no more business as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scheib. Our next uh, speaker is Adrian Del Maestro. And I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dr. Adrian Del Maestro. I'm a professor of physics and electrical engineering and computer science at the University of Tennessee. Uh, I moved here in August, right in the middle of the pandemic, from Vermont, where I was also a professor of physics and the director of the Vermont Advanced Computing Corps. In Burlington, I had uh, fiber to my home through a municipal broadband, uh, gigabit symmetric internet. And while I was working at home during the pandemic, moving from a place that had symmetric internet to one that didn't really affected the type of science that I could actually do working from home. Basically, with you know, one of the things that I do is do large computations on supercomputers that may be in different places. For example, the, the NASA Ames supercomputer, which is in California. Uh, then I bring that data, which could be hundreds of gigabytes, back to my local computer, which might have lots of GPUs. We then process that locally and then maybe do something else with it. So oftentimes, I'm needing to both download and upload data, uh, large amounts of data on the order of 100 gigabit per second. Um, and I really had to change how I would schedule my workflow moving to a place without access to symmetric internet. 
So I just wanted to, uh, to briefly say how much in favor I am of, of this, that it can be a real game changer, not just for business and not just for downloading movies or uploading movies, uh, but also for science. And you know, as we're going to be working from home potentially more and more, having access to symmetric internet, I would be happy to get 2.5 gigabit symmetric internet, uh, which would really allow me to you know, reach further and do new types of science that I'm not able to do otherwise. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak, and I really hope that this proposal goes through. So thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Our next uh, speaker is Mr. Brian Hornback. Thank you very much. Just really two questions and, and one, um, real, I guess three, really. I see where you're um, going to take $35 million in loans for the fiber division over the first two years. Uh, as I understand it, uh, I think that the devil's in the details, and what I would like to see is how does that correspond to the state law about cross-subsidiation? Um, also, curious to see in the details uh, how you believe you can get to a 35 percent uptake rate in an already competitive market. Um, you know, I'm all about competition, but I prefer that competition to be with folks that you can find in the phone book and not necessarily quasi-governmental entities. Uh, this week, I read. Um, uh, that um, the water and sewer division has contacted owners of duplexes and informed them that over beginning, I guess, in the very near future, their rates are going to be uh, charged at a commercial rate, not a residential rate. So if KUB is going to do that now in water and sewer, after all the years of providing water and sewer, how soon do you do that as soon as you begin a fiber division. And that's all my comments. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. And our staff will be available uh, uh, after the presentation to answer those questions. So thank you for raising them. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Kent Minot. Hey, good evening, commissioners. Nice to see you in person, Chair Askew. Um, yeah, I'm Kent Minow. Uh, I'm on the executive committee of the local Sierra Club, Club group here, the Harvey Broom Group, and uh, um, <clears throat> I enthusiastically support the plan to do the, the broadband build-out. And uh, I took, the, took my enthusiasm to the executive committee meeting last night, and I asked them if I could represent the Sierra Club and say the Sierra Club also supports it. And they hemmed and hawed for a while, and then they finally said, yes, we can, because they realized that Broadband build-out is important for a number of environmental goals that we support. Uh, the efficiency goals that were mentioned and also uh, implementing uh, time-of-use meters and demand response and uh, vehicle-to-grid uh, communication, all these things are going to be important as we go forward creating the energy system and economy of the 21st century. Uh, I'd also like to uh, mention, I know the mayor and other people have uh, been speaking to business owners and rural customers. I've been speaking to an important constituency myself, my 15-year-old grandson. And uh, he's just done a year's worth of schoolwork in middle school. And I know that uh, when our uh, uh, corporate uh, internet provider breaks down and he's trying to do his homework, I can hear him stomping through the house uttering some language that his mother doesn't approve of. And uh, uh, I, I urge you to think about his constituents, all his fellow constituents in uh, middle school and, uh, and high school, because this is going to be really important for education going forward, especially in rural areas, as has been pointed out by others. Um, we Sierra Club members are a picky bunch, as I'm sure you've noticed. And we, we do have one concern. It doesn't stand in the way of our enthusiastic uh, support of this program, and that is the, the electrical rate increase, 3% over three years, and that's going to amount to about 10% when, it, when it's finished. And we're in favor of it. We support it. But um, we think that also the um, energy efficiency upgrade programs that KUB has supported and done well are really underfunded. There are 3,000 people on that waiting list, and our low-income customers that are going to be impacted by this 10 percent increase could really use faster energy efficiency upgrades. I know it's a separate issue, but let's all work together and try and make that happen again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Renault. 
Our next speaker is Mr. Lawrence Travis. Hi, thanks for hearing my comments tonight. Um, just briefly, I'm gonna describe my current um, circumstances. So, been working from home for the last year in the pandemic, like most other people. I have one internet provider, which is Comcast. Um, they're charging me $120 a month for a service that's about half the speed that this plan is going to offer. And the service can be best described as inconsistent. Um, not old enough to be losing my hearing yet, but I've asked my coworkers to repeat themselves on video calls more often than I'd like to admit at this point. Um, and just as the impact on my work, it's been given much slower. So I started at the National Lab doing science and like the previous scientists that are up here, I'm downloading and uploading large files and it's actually slowed down my pace of research. And then as I transition out of my postdoc to pilot company doing research for them, um, the same issues. I'm uploading and downloading large files constantly, slows down my pace. And uh, unique to tech workers, more and more companies are looking to go permanently remote. And I've been informed by pilot that there are not actually enough desks for all the IT workers they've hired. So they expect us to stay home for portions of the week. So, um, if we wanna attract more high-tech workers and whatnot, we need this kind of infrastructure in place to give opportunities. And on a more personal note, I grew up in a low-income suburban area, and I personally watched, at the time, because I'm getting old, DSL come to neighborhoods that were much more affluent and create a digital divide between where I grew up with 56K and sometimes only a couple blocks away growing up with high-speed internet. And that gave different opportunities to those kids than I had. And even if it was available at the time, my parents would not have been able to afford a bill of $120 a month to give that opportunity to me. So this has equity issues and economic growth issues, I think, that need to be considered. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is uh, Ms. Lisa Faulkner. My name is Lisa and I'm a nurse and um, I'm really all for stronger internet service. Uh, telehealth is such a big thing now that's going on and, and I'm not here to speak for it or against it because to be honest, I just learned of this two days ago. And so after I learned about it, I started doing some research on my own, trying to find out more information about it. So that's one of my primary reasons being here tonight is to learn. And so I asked a lot of my people that's in my community and people that I know about it, kind of find out they, they didn't know anything about it either. So one of my questions was, because I seen on the internet where y'all had polled so many people and asked, you know, were they for this, against it, do they need it? And I'm wondering, how do y'all go about doing that? How do y'all, who do you reach out to? Because I, like I said, I never heard and I try to stay up on things. Um, I, I, I am in agreement for the stronger internet service because my kids are being homeschooling and their internet service is just awful. They can't stay online. If two or three of them on at the same time, somebody have to give up so the other can complete their work. So I know the need of it. But I'm also concerned about, like for instance with COVID, there was a lot of people that had to make decisions when they lost their jobs. Do I keep my internet service? Do I keep my cable? You gotta keep your lights on. You gotta have heat and air. Is this all gonna be on one bill? And if it's all on one bill, you know, if somebody can't make a payment, they lose everything, they lose their internet cable and their lights or heat. So that was one of my main questions. So I'm here today, I've learned a lot just listening to the presentation, but I'm here just to kind of learn more about it and, and find out, you know, how will that affect people that are struggling anyway with making payments and bill payment if this is all together on one bill. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, and I hope that you will reach out to our staff at the end of the meeting. They, they'll they be able to give you some answers to All those right, questions. Thank you. thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Bernice Phillips. Good evening. Thank you all for allowing us this opportunity to come and share and express our thoughts. I am Bernice Phillips. My question has been answered so many times 
Dr. Scheib did an excellent job on um, speaking on behalf of KUB how you all have helped low-income families to continue on with their utility bills during the pandemic. I just want to know during this time as we move forward to this great endeavor, will that continue low-income families who will be struggling trying to pay the utility bills and the increase, will KUB continue to do that, that assistance? Also, on the last page of your uh, program that you handed out, it states customers who don't subscribe to KUB broadband can benefit as well. I am uh, subscri subscribed through KUB. I will get the increase. So I will be paying um, along with, with KUB. But then if uh, someone that does not receive the service, I mean, receive KUB service can still be a part of this, what would they pay? Would they pay a higher rate or will we all be paying the, the same? I would just like to know what's going to be the difference in uh, KUB customer versus a non-KUB customer. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We'll be able to answer that question and please seek out our staff after the meeting. Uh, our next speaker is Ms. Patricia Hammonds. Good evening, board. My question tonight um, stems from the public forums and the meetings. Is this the first meeting? Have there been other meetings? Um, as Ms. Faulkner stated earlier, when uh, reaching out to some of my constituents and, and folks in the, in the community to say, well, do you, have you heard about the broadband? Do you know what's going on? Several people were kind of scratching their heads like, well, no. Well, you know what? I think I maybe got something in the mail. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I did. Um, so will this be the only public forum meeting for you all to make your decision just based on this one? Or will there be more meetings for folks to be able to come to and express their uh, opinions and then also, too, I'm a person who has actually worked from home for the past 20-something years. So prior uh, pandemic, uh, I know how important it is for uh, Internet and broadband service. So I am definitely a proponent of the broadband service. But what my concern is is that there have not been enough uh, people in the community who are aware that this is, sounds like about to come uh, to fruition. Um, uh, even a uh, rumored that uh, there's a department already being established and folks are being hired and um, just wanted to know the validity even of that statement that if it has not been approved yet, if, if this is, it has, it has moved forward. So just kind of want to make sure that um, the community is as, as informed as it can be. Thank you so much. Uh, we have not voted to move ahead, nor has the city council moved to, uh, voted to move ahead, and so we're in the process of uh, getting input tonight. But if you have specific questions about the methodology we've used to inform the public, please do check with staff after, right after the meeting. Right. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Our next speaker is Ms. Nancy Smith. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. Also, I didn't learn about this till a couple of days ago. And I belong, well, I'm not in the HOA uh, on the board, but we have a meeting tomorrow night and I told them I'd come tonight and to share what I found out. And there are several issues. One is cost up and above what the rate increase will be on a KUB bill, the actual cost for the broadband service to each individual, either low income or fixed income. We need to find out about that, and I need to let them know, because at the end of the year, our condo association, our contract runs out with Comcast, and so all these people are going to have to either find somebody else, and I was wanting to know the timeline is that you said fall of 2021 that this could start if it's approved. Is that correct? Uh, if I recall correctly, you said we would start 
just a clarification. We would start. Yeah, uh, um, we would start that, but it will take seven years to build out, and we will we will serve customers as we would go. Um, so that timeline, we 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 don't exactly know where we're going just yet. It's just a rough estimate. So I just need to kind of let them give them an idea right. what they can and can't do. Right. They have uh, that's part of the reason I asked Jamie. It was just a clarification. We would, if if the city council approves this, if the KB board approves this, then we will start building the network. So it it, uh, it will not be available by the end of this year. And our community is retired, fixed income people. So that's a big chunk. <laughs> so that's one of my concerns. And I appreciate y'all. And it sounds good. And hopefully it is. Okay. Thank you. Those are the only people we had who had registered to speak and whom we knew were present. There may be a couple of others here. Yes, we have a few more. Mr. Ben Klein. Hello, so in case you couldn't tell from the sign already, I am in strong favor of rolling out broadband. So I am a PhD student at the University of Tennessee and I have lived my entire life here in Knoxville. So I know the pain personally of growing up with nothing but six megabit per second upload speed. So in case you aren't familiar with the numbers here, that essentially limited our entire household of four people to approximately one video call at a time. So that came with a set of limitations that also affected my desire to start a internet-based contracting business of my own here in Knoxville. So while our initial plans were pretty promising and we had hardware in my house, which we were planning to start building out our infrastructure with, uh, the internet service available to us was a limiting factor in my ability to actually create and serve customers. So just recently, just this year, we moved out of that location, but still the best service we have possible there at that location is six megabits per second, which is not enough to even really turn in homework on time on some cases. If it takes, you know, a hundred megabyte file, say more than, say five minutes to upload, and you're one of those people who stays up late at night at midnight, then in some cases that can result in it going over the deadline. And I certainly hate to blame internet service of all things for that problem. So I am strongly in favor of rolling out a symmetric gigabit internet to all members. And I believe that not only will KUB benefit personally, but everybody else in the affected area because of the competition it creates and encourages the existing ISPs to improve their own service and match what we can do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your being here. Our next speaker is Mr. Tyler Roy. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, yeah, my name is Tyler Roy, and I'm with uh, Witten and Roy Partnership. And we're an international consulting firm based here out of Knoxville, actually. Um, we service 42 different countries around the world. And even well before COVID, all of our business was done over video calls. And I tell you what, when I'm calling a country like Cambodia and the internet problems are on our end, that's a problem. <laughs> and that happens more often than not. So when I heard that uh, EPB was looking to expand into, into Knoxville, I was absolutely elated, right? Unfortunately, it seems that the uh, Tennessee State General Assembly is a wholly owned subsidiary of Comcast. So um, it, it, it didn't end up working out that way. The thing is, is that you know, when my internet goes out for days at a time like it did recently, and I, can, I get told by a machine that it'll be next Wednesday before someone come out, can come out, that doesn't work for me, right? It slows down our business here. Um, it makes it very difficult to to conduct the type of business that we do. And I'm sure that for educational uh, aspects and whatnot, it's, it's also equally difficult. Um, just just for, for the understanding of everybody here, um, this symmetrical internet thing, you know, currently I pay about $80 a month for my Comcast bill, 
right? I get about 400 megabits a second upstream and 20, or I'm sorry, downstream and 20 upstream. That was the measure I took this morning, right? Symmetric means that your upstream will be 50 times faster than that, right? And that's the kind of business that we can do. If you've taken a look at Chattanooga recently, it's become a bastion of culture, tech business, and, and just a wonderful place to really live. And I think that it will really boost Knoxville um, to the next level if we can get that and get that here. So I strongly support the, uh, the uh, you know, fiber internet from KUV. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next speaker is Ms. Donna Wilburn. Good evening. And I'm so sorry that a lot of people have... Uh, trouble with their internet at home. I happen not to be one of those. I have all the internet that I need, all the speeds that I need. My sister works from home at my house. I have a great niece and a great nephew that spent many days at my house doing their schooling. No problems. I don't need another internet provider nor do I want my electric rates to go up to provide that service. You know, we have more than one provider. Maybe improvements need to be made, but I don't want to pay for KUV to get in to the cable and internet business. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am, for that, uh, for your position and for speaking it. Our next speaker is Aiden Rudder. Uh, hello. Is this good? There you go. Um, I just like to briefly say that if this endeavor is going to look anything like what happened in Chattanooga. Uh, I'm all for it, and I'm frankly really excited to hear about this happening, which is why I want to show up and just be in front of this microphone today. Um, I've grown up here. Uh, right now I'm a master's student at the University of Tennessee, and I'm just, um, I think it's frankly common knowledge to, or I should say that it's very common that we see our big ISPs that are often kind of forming somewhat of an oligarchy to be the butt end of jokes because of their reliability, because of their unscrupulous practices. Um, I mean, I'm only 23 and I have stories uh, from people I know, from my own personal experience having to deal with Comcast and so forth. Um, and I just would really love to see uh, something like this happen. So <clears throat> that's all I have to say, really. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our final speaker is uh, Mr. Tim Berry. Good evening. Um, sorry, I was originally signed up to speak and I was a late arrival, so thank you for allowing me to speak even after I've probably already been passed up. Uh, as you can tell by looking at me, I've been around a few years. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Knoxville. I live uh, in South Knoxville. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, KUB for being forward thinking on this. Several speakers have already mentioned uh, the city of Chattanooga. Uh, my uh, line of work recently took me to Chattanooga, and uh, I got to see firsthand uh, the direct result of what uh, EPB, uh, providing Internet service to Chattanoogans, uh, has done. Uh, and I will say that it's great. Uh, questions that I would have, uh, number one, uh, where will tech support be? Uh, this may be a question that you may not be prepared to answer, but let me uh, advise you that as great as this idea is and as much as I am in favor of it, if by doing so 
we have to speak to the same foreign-based call center that other providers have that can't speak English. And yes, I know I have a southern accent, but I think I'm fairly understandable. Uh, it will lead to more frustration. So I would ask that in the costs of putting such a system together, please factor in the cost of tech support, preferably local tech support. Um, I see that several surrounding you uh, areas uh, already have this. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar that are, are listening behind me, um, the, uh, the Scott County, Tennessee, Fentress County, Tennessee, already have their utilities involved in internet service and it has made a drastic difference. Frankly, their internet service is better than mine and I live inside the city of Knoxville, less than a half a mile away from a city fire hall. Uh, and that, that shouldn't be. Um, I will also thank you for making the consideration to do this via fiber and not over a previous technology called broadband over power lines because as a broadcast radio engineer, that's nothing but, but disaster. And if you want the technical reason why, I'll explain it later. Otherwise, I won't bore everybody, but please don't do broadband over power lines. Thank you for that. Uh, several speakers have mentioned that they had more than one internet provider. At my residence, inside the city of Knoxville, less than a quarter mile off of Chapman Highway, I have two internet providers if I'm willing to sacrifice for DSL at 720K. That's not megabits, that's kilobits. Um, I'm told that the reason why is because uh, the, uh, the, the um, cable that comes up there is too small and the local large monopoly that starts with an A refuses to replace it. I also, and I see I'm about out of time, uh, got from my previous uh, or from the present uh, internet provider, my bill went up uh, $10 last month unexplained. I am definitely for this proposal and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there any other member of the public who would like to speak? Oh, did you? I'm sorry we didn't catch you. Please come up. Introduce yourself, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you all for listening to me, and thank every single one of you for coming. Uh, I very much believe in this. Uh, my name is Mark Messer. Uh, I'm a cybersecurity engineer. I work for a Fortune, probably around 250, DOD contractor in the engineering and architecture department. Um, so I've, I cannot do my work at, uh, you know, Starbucks if the internet goes down, but that's selfish and that's not what I'm here to talk about. Um, so despite the fact that I did okay for myself, uh, I grew up doing horribly in school, barely graduated high school. Uh, I would not probably be here today at all if it was not for the availability of internet in a library because my family couldn't afford it and I was able to go there and learn quite a bit. Um, at this point, I feel like that has paid dividends to communities, to my company, and hopefully um, will continue to throughout a career, but I believe, uh, I believe very strongly in that. I, I firmly believe, because I've helped select sites where we're going to build things up in, you are eventually gonna have to do this. It, it's a matter of time. I mean, it is, Bandwidth has only increased and increased. The pricing from places like Comcast is nonsensical. A gentleman earlier, I think, said he was paying $80 a month for 600, 800, something like that, I don't know. I pay less than him from the same company for 1,240 up. That's 1,240 up, which is nonsensical. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And it's supposed to be more than 40 up because I have a rack server about yay high in my kitchen. Um, but I think in terms of affordability, the, the plan is amazing. Um, we need to bridge the digital divide for kids who do not do as well in classrooms. We can't leave kids behind, especially as kids haven't been able to be in a classroom for the past you know, year and a half or whatever. Um, it's, it's of extraordinary importance. Don't leave people like me behind, we needed it. Uh, it's more attractive to businesses and you're, we need to have critical control of critical infrastructure not under Comcast. We're not gonna be selling out our highway system to AT&T either. We, we need to be in charge of this. This is ours. This is our data. This is our city. We live here. This, we need to be running it. It's, it's critically important. And the entire country is gonna be doing this eventually. So we don't wanna be the last people who are begging startups and companies to come and hire people here. Um, it, it's absolutely an inevitability and it's critical infrastructure that we need to begin investing in now and not 10 years later, especially if it's going to take seven years. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others 
Yes, sir. First off, thanks uh, for doing this for, for everyone. Uh, my name is Wesley Kirkland. I had a couple of things I wanted to bring up. One, this is very much actually in favor of net neutrality, which I don't think a lot of people have noticed. There's no data caps. Data is being hopefully pro or fairly treated across the network. Neutrality? Yes, net okay. neutrality, the thing that was unfortunately killed. Um, the other thing is, personally, right now, I live in a soon-to-be two ISP area. Both are, um, I have WOW and I have Comcast. Comcast did the dumbest thing, and I have fiber in my house, but I'm still Doxus with 1,200 over 40. Um, like the previous speaker, I also have a rack server in my house, so whoops. But to be able to have a symmetrical upload, um, when I left my last residence, I was explicitly looking for places that had symmetrical fiber, and I refused to move anywhere else that did, and I had to sacrifice that for my current residence, which is very unfortunate, because um, I'm also transferring hundred, hundreds of gigs of files a day. But another point I actually want to bring up, Broadband isn't a right, it's a basic utility. It's needed for education, it's needed for our jobs. I've been working from home for a couple of years now, even pre-COVID. If my internet goes out, I'm not making money. Um, straight up period. Um, a couple of actual points on the service itself. Um, while I do believe one gig is necessary for everyone, there are definitely are residences that don't need one gig. Offering a lower tier plan, say 100 or 250 symmetrical at a lower price point. That's a valid option. In addition to that, the um, managed router service, I'm completely for it. There's a lot of people, my grandmother, I don't want to support her, <laughs> let someone else do it. Um, <laughs> but $15 a month, I believe, is a little bit too much for that, especially when, unfortunately, our um, competitors like Craptastic, as I like to call them, are offering 10 gig, or I'm sorry, $10 a month for their routers. Um, that's about it. And then I have one technical question I'll have to get answered later. Uh, I'm curious, will there, with current IPv4 exhaustion, will there be static IP slash DHCP um, with a uh, public IP address available, or is this going to be CG9? And th those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your uh, secret regarding your grandmother is safe with us. <laughs> this is, however, a public meeting. <laughs> so, uh, any others who would like to speak? Yes, sir, in the back. We've got a couple. We have three. Okay. Thank you. My name is Tommy Helms. I'm from Union County. I just have a couple of statements to make. Um, I, I'm also against subsidizing um, uh, this service through my electric bill. Um, not in favor of that. Uh, the next thing, are the questions going to be allowed to be asked in the forum, or is it going to be the forum going to be dismissed and then, and then the questions are asked over in a corner? Okay, so that's been my experience, and that doesn't, that doesn't bode well for the questions that need to be asked, and there's a ton of questions that, that can be asked in this. And I would encourage you to allow the questions to be asked in the forum so that we can, everybody can hear them, because then you just only get a pocket of people. And then once the room leaves, you don't ever have those people back together in the same room. Um, the other thing I would like to address my mayor in Union County, um, Mayor Bailey. I've not, I've not personally met you yet, but I'm, I'm going to. Um, well, no, I, I don't mean that like that. Um, <laughs> we talked on the phone, though. Um, the poor decision by Union County Commission over the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, when they rooted out a company that was going to come in and they were going to broadband Union County, they were going to put internet service in and give Comcast a challenge, um, Union County Commission did that. That was That's on them. Um, so uh, with that, I would appreciate it if y'all would allow the questions to be asked in the, in the form. Uh, oh, I got way too many. You know, like, is it going to be five? G yeah, I just, I just, I have way too many. You know, I know other people had questions also, but I have, I have way too many questions. And I may, you know, I may make a phone call or something like that. But I would appreciate it if you would allow those to be in the form. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Who else? We're straight in the middle. 
and then we got one to the left and one to the right. Okay. I think I'm going to say about point of fact rather than have it be towards the board. My name is Dennis Hunt, and I had the same surname as the FCC when Al Gore and Bill Clinton were in office. Worked for Tennessee Wireless, giving cable service to the non-cabled area to the point where the competing cable companies didn't want service going there yet. I ended up selling out to a company in Texas, and all the antennas we mounted in trees were, uh, quote, unquote, not a quality install, and I was uh, laid off, so not to be there to ask important questions as they transitioned from one company to the other. And we were working in uh, gigahertz rather than gigabytes. Um, so the uh, previous person suggested the uh, question should be on the same form, and I, and I support that as well. And when the second governor proposed economic expansion by bringing broad broadband to rural communities, my first reaction is they could sell them something rather than the service that would provide to the rural counties. And that's, let's leave it at that for statements rather than me thinking with my mouth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it does occur to me that there, uh, there may be opportunities for us. I'll, I'll ask the staff as they get questions uh, if there's a way we can uh, put the answers to those questions on our website so that people will have it, the public will have opportunity to hear the, uh, uh, to see the answers to the questions. In the back. Thank you for letting us come out. And I'm personally very supportive of this. Um, I am a millennial that lives in the boonies. I don't have any options for internet apart from Verizon. And that's a Verizon hotspot. I'm limited to 15 gigabytes per device. Um, we, my wife blew through that in a week. You know, or sorry, she blew through two hotspots in a week. Um, I, my question, I suppose, would be, how are you going to survey the most, th those, I suppose, in, in dire need of this, like me, don't have any options? Um, and are there any other potential ways of, if this is going to take seven years to run lines of fiber throughout the county, are there ways to use things like CBRS, um, fixed wireless, things like that, to just at least get something out to these people until we can connect? You know, because a, a gigabyte, two and a half gigabytes per second, that's amazing which we're probably going to need in 2029. But now, I mean, I could get by with 50 megabytes per second, you know, both whether that's down, probably 15 up. And if there's a stopgap solution until we can get all of the fiber out there, um, would I be really interested to learn if there's something there. And then I think my last point as well, and this isn't to, you know, to be negative towards anyone who's come up either way, I would just say that I think, and I have, haven't done the numbers, I, We'll probably never do the numbers, but additional cost to our electric for another service that is going to be 10 times better than existing services will probably save us money, correct? So if we're paying $100 for Comcast, that's great for people that have access to that. But I don't have access to it. If I'm paying $50 for electric and whatever it is, you know, that cost probably works out cheaper in the long run for a better service for my electric and my internet. So, Thanks. Right, thank you. Uh, one clarification, while it will take six, seven years to build out the system, we will be providing service as we build out. So uh, that's, that's an important point. Uh, yes, sir. Hi, my name's uh, Mark Mishu. I'm a doctor who um, I'm looking to move back into Knoxville um, in the coming year. And you know, I've, I'm kind of new on this issue as well, um, but I've heard some good points on both sides. And I think that, you know, it's something that I th sounds like still needs to be flushed out, a lot of issues, a lot of questions. And I think that it could be a good, good point to make this an issue that voters can decide on and why rush this through um, and let the city council elections take place and then let the voters have their say. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, hello. Um, my name is Holly Solis, and I'm a resident of South Knox County. Um, and my husband and I just moved here from Florida, as Mayor Coon Cannon mentioned. I'm not a very technical person, so I'm not going to get into all of that, but I just wanted to offer a little bit of a different perspective. Um, as we moved here from Florida, we were searching for some land to purchase, and through that, we did a lot of research because we realized once we started looking that Internet was first a necessity for us, and it uh, drove really our choices in where we were going to purchase property and so we did a lot of research we spoke to neighbors before we bought our property and everyone um, on our road is using Comcast as their provider and so we went ahead and we built a new home which we just moved into a few weeks ago but over the course of the last few months we've been reaching out to Comcast to please come and provide service to us um, in which we've been getting the runaround with and also as others have mentioned being transferred to other countries where people don't understand what I'm trying to explain. Um, we've had multiple technicians come out to our house and say that our address is serviceable, um, submit tickets, and then we're hearing on the phone that our address is not serviceable. So I just wanted to let you all know that these are the types of things that are happening and and as some of the other residents have mentioned, I am maybe a mile off of Chapman Highway. I am by no means in the middle of nowhere, um, <laughs> or the boonies, as others have said. Um, and being 15 minutes from downtown Knoxville, I just wouldn't think that this would be an issue that we would be up against. So I wanted to let you know that um, not only is their service not that great, but they are kind of picking and choosing whether or not they'd like to provide that service. And I think. One of the biggest reasons is because our house is about 300 feet off of the road. And in Knoxville, that's a good portion of residents whose homes are a little bit off the road. Um, so I just wanted to offer that perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome to Knoxville. Good. We agree. Thank you. I hope we're less hidden soon. <laughs> Are there any others who would like to speak? Uh, so, oh yes, in the back, I'm sorry. Hi, uh, so my name's Hasib. I serve on the Community Advisory Panel for KB, and this is uh, one of the topics that we discussed at a meeting several months ago. And I just wanted to show my support so I'm a licensed attorney, but I also teach part-time uh, at UT and I teach business. And what's remarkable is the access to learning new things and the access to being able to make money online. This isn't just, let's choose which ISP. This is a chance for people to reinvent their lives and their households and how they want their children to be raised. And so I just hope, as everyone's very committed to being here and learning more about this, that they continue to learn more about all the wonderful details that KEB has put into such a well thought out plan. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. And thank you for your service on the community advisory panel. Thank you. Right here. Yes, ma'am. We're glad you summoned the courage. Well, um, um, I live in Seven Islands. I grew up in Seven Islands. I uh, went to school in Seven Islands. And um, my parents went to school there. Um, and we have nothing. Uh, we, um, I, ha I have very, several hats, but I am an educator. But I'm also an IT specialist. And I actually called my school, which I've worked at, my little elementary school, uh, when COVID hit, and I said, let me know anybody in this little school district area that needs help to get on the internet. 
because we have a lot of grandparents who would not even have a clue. And the sad part is, even after you give them, get them on the internet, we're talking three megabytes per second. Three. That's on a good day, and I know what I'm doing. Uh, that's just, it's terrible. I have got a hotspot with one cell company, another hotspot account with another cell company, and I'm barely holding on to a DSL that goes down seven to eight times an hour holding my security system. And I cannot move. This is my family's farm. It's not like I can just, oh yeah, let's sell it and go across town and buy something that's got high-speed internet. It's just not there, and I'm not going to do it. I live way up right next to the state park. Actually, we'll border the state park soon. Um, and I have five to six of my neighbors working from home, and we joke about the internet because, you know, this one will try this, and this one will try this, and this one will try this, and oh yeah, they fixed that, but no, it didn't get fixed, you know. We just, it's, it's a running joke, and um, I'm really tired of that. Um, I don't know what else to do. I really don't. And it's not even an issue of money. It's just a lot of people think we have choices in the rural area, but three megabytes per second is not really a choice. And I appreciate you hearing me, and I hope we get there soon. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. In the back? I, um, I just recently heard about this, and so I can tell that it's a large crowd of people that are for this, and I'm all, I'm all ears. Um, so I'm not really sure. Uh, my first question, I guess, is I might have missed it in the presentation. What is this process? How does this go forward? Does, is it, does it go to the city council? Does it go to the people? Does it go to the customers of KUB? How, what the process is? for approval and what the time frame is for approval because it appears that a lot of people didn't know about it or just knew about it recently. And so I, I was kind of interested in that. And also, um, I read in your thing that the investment will enable a smarter, more reliable electrical grid. And I'm wondering if this uh, upgrade in the electrical grid is being put on the backs of people kind of saying we're going to give you broadband too, but we're also um, going to upgrade our system. Would you be upgrading your system without the broadband? Um, and I guess the, the, the last thing is I just um, feel like it, there should be more, uh, as the one gentleman said, there should be ability to hear the answers to these questions because it's not very helpful just to hear a bunch of questions and there's no way I'm going to stay around for two, three hours going to each person to see. So it'd be nice if there was a forum where we could get answers to our questions. Thank you for that. Uh, and we certainly don't intend to stay here two or three hours either. So please uh, uh, seek out any one of our uh, 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 members of our staff. They should be able to answer most of your questions and we will establish a way of getting those answers to the questions out to the public. Uh, uh, just a clarification, the board will have to decide first if we recommend this to the city council and then the city council will have to vote uh, about whether we move forward. So. Uh, Yes, sir. What we're in the next month, uh, two months. When are we in the next? We've got about uh, another month and a half before we consider it as a board, and then it will go straight to the city council. Um, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Board, for uh, having this out for this forum this evening. Uh, a couple of questions. One is a little bit jovial, but uh, I'll ask anyway. What took you so long? <laughs> and uh, the other thing which is really serious to me is uh, the deployment of the technology should be not current, but should be very much forward-looking. Uh, don't build for what you need now. Build right. for what you might need in the future. And my name's Ken Hatfield. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Hatchell. That's a question we ask ourselves every time we discuss this. Uh, others? Yes. I'm from Corriton and oh, it's wrong. Okay. Could you tell us your name? I'm Logan Ostrom. I'm from Corriton. I find the I'm supportive of it. I, there's been many cases where me and my brother have had to switch which of us were on the internet just to keep with our Zoom calls, or even cases where it just cut off on exams. Though I also remember from when my father lost the job in what I guess is now called the Great Recession of seeing that pink tab on the door. So I am also very nervous on, and questioning on, will this be fully connected with all the other utilities or be a separate bill, which has been addressed before by others here? We're going to uh, please, uh, after, the, after the meeting, uh, because I don't know exactly that answer. So if you would just check with the staff. Uh, Go ahead, Jamie. Since, since a number of folks have asked that particular question, the current thinking is it would be two separate bills. Um, and honestly, we're taking our leave from Chattanooga in that particular regard. Um, so trying to uh, keep those separate in that particular regard. So you'd have your traditional KEB utility bill, and then you'd have your internet service in that particular regard. Thank you for answering my question. Very good question. A number of folks Very have asked good. that. Thank tonight. you, sir. That is all. We appreciate you. Are there any others who would like to comment? Again, uh, if I might ask the members of the staff to raise your hands so that people can see. Uh, and uh, if you'll ask a question, if, if uh, your question falls outside the uh, particular area of expertise of whichever person you ask, they'll get you to the right person. And, and Chair, ask you our intent was to, to log all these questions. Yes. And there's a website, our keb.org slash broadband. We will post all of the answers to all of your questions. If we didn't answer your question, there are also the broadband feedback email addresses on that website. Call our call center. We want to talk to you about this and get your feedback. So. Um, but I'll, I'll steal the mic and say thank you for attending. We're very interested in your feedback. So, uh, but we will try to post all the answers to the questions we got tonight. KUB.org. They com. KUB.org slash broadband. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, seeing no others, uh, I, I would like to say on behalf of all of us on the board how much we appreciate your being here this evening. We got. Do we, oh, we have one. I'm sorry. Oh, there you are. We'll be glad to post it. We'll post the, the PowerPoint on the website. Thanks. That's a great question. But we appreciate your being here. We appreciate your uh, all of your points of view. We will take them all into consideration, I promise. Uh, and with that, this meeting is adjourned.